You're listening to Rod and Style Radio, the latest podcast brought to you by RodandStyle.com, which is where you can find links for merch, videos from our YouTube channel, along with stories and tech talk from some of the greatest folks in the culture. So grab the wheel, it's about to get wild. You've tuned in to Rod and Style. So, do you prefer just to go by Squindo or Tony? What, uh, what, whatever I, you prefer. I, I dislike Tony. I always have. Okay, perfect. Uh, uh, as long my, as we father, know that. My, my father named me after a guy he met in a bar. Oh, lovely! He, he, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful story. I, I, uh, he said. I asked him finally, like years later. I'm like, was the guy a good dude or was he like an asshole? What was the deal? He's like, I think he bought me a beer. I'm like. All right. <laughs> he, he wanted my name to be Tony, but he didn't like Anthony. So he, this dude's name was Antone, which I got shit for my entire life. Like growing up that's in school, it was like always the teachers, everything was like Antoine and Squindell. They could, they couldn't pronounce anything. So <laughs> I'm like, just, just go with the last name. See, I lucked out. I had very easy names, like one syllable names is perfect for me. So, right. 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 No mispronunciation by any, any idiots or anything. I still get it now though. I'm like, I've, there's a few people that I've said squindo and they're like, they'll still call me like squin, squiddo or (laughs) like squiggly. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Squiggy. Lenny is squiggy. Yeah. From Laverne and Shirley. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's about the same mentality, maybe, but uh, <laughs> no, no, so I think, bad. I think one of my favorite videos going around right now is the uh, uh, was it the Squig Tones, and uh, there's everybody saying this is what I'm going to tell my kids that the Misfits were. And, oh yeah, 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 I love that video. <laughs> uh, those are awesome. I All of those I, I'm going to tell my. Yeah, I'm not going to tell that? Danzig that when we interview him, but no, no, <laughs> there was a, I was at a bar, uh, in Orlando not that long ago and we were seeing, uh, we were, oh, we were seeing a couple cats and, uh, I'm hanging out with this guy they introduced me to and he does a bunch of t-shirt printing for Doyle and Misfits and stuff. And on this, by the back tiki bar, there was a, a picture of Glenn Danzig, and it said, "You must be this at least this tall to drink here." <laughs> and uh, he took the photo. He took a photo of it and sent it to uh, Jerry Only. And I'm like, I I should do the same thing. Like I got Jerry's number. I should send him. I, I totally forgot. Like I, it was already a couple of uh, cocktails in, so I didn't remember to do it. But oh, so man. sad, poor guy. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of uh one of the last uh shows that my band got to play here in San Antonio was opening up for uh the Misfits uh fronted by Jerry Only. So that was oh, a wow. good time. That was several yeah, how years long ago. ago was this? Oh 2008, 2007 maybe? Somewhere around wow. that. That's uh I think that's when I I don't remember the year I did their their cover. It was their their nineteen fifties project one. But oh yeah. yeah, it's like it's not not the best album. No, but it was no. decent. I mean, it it wasn't the worst thing I've ever heard. No, and at least I could say now that I did a Misfits cover, so it was, it was a nice <laughs> little. Uh, I, I was in a, another bar. It had sound like a total alcoholic, <laughs> and uh, some we were. I was just bullshitting with this guy that we, we were friends with for not great friends, but we knew each other and we just bullshitting. And we were talking about the worst tattoo we ever got. And he pulls up his sleeve and he shows me this, the artwork I did for that album cover. And it, it was such a shit tattoo. And I'm like, you know, I drew that. And he's like, you drew it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I drew it. Sorry. <laughs> 
Like, oh. I don't know if this is an insult or a compliment. I mean, you have the tattoo, that, but it is pretty shitty. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've often sad. wondered that with some of the artists that we've talked with. Uh, because, uh, I mean, you got to think about, you know, the fact that some people really dig this shit so much that they'll go out and get it tattooed on them. Like you still win <laughs> the award for worst tattoo. No one can ever beat you. I do. Yeah. Which one? You know, which one your boner wolf tattoo. Yeah. My ribs. <laughs> Yeah, no. He, so oh. he has a giant, and I mean giant, it takes up his entire ribs. And he was like, oh, by the way, this is when we were dating. He's like, oh, you, oh, by the way, I can never go, like, we can go to the pool, but I'll probably get stared at. And I was like, why? And he's like, oh, this tattoo oh, yeah. I have. And I was like, oh, that doesn't sound good. And he's like, yeah, and it can't get covered up. It's too huge. Oh, it takes up his oh. entire side of his ribs. And it's a fuck, oh. it's a fucking wolf. With a boner, and then on the other side of it is like Little Red Riding Hood, and she's lifting up her skirt. Like I was like, this is the worst tattoo you could have ever gotten. So yeah, well done. Uh, no, <laughs> it's so uh, cheesy. It's like one of the, like the traditional fifties pinup kind of like uh, drawing right. of Little Red Riding Hood, and then like a Tex uh, Avery tried right. kind of uh, uh, wolf. And it's like, yeah, it's it's pretty. It it could be finished. The wolf's not finished yet, so He's maybe not when colored it's in. when it's done, maybe oh. some, maybe something can be uh, reconciled with it. But yeah, no, it, it's a terrible. Ta- it's not a terrible looking tattoo. It's just a terrible tattoo. <laughs> well, it, well, I've gotten worse. We'll agree I've, I've to disagree. Much worse. We'll agree. Or yeah. your Down syndrome cat. He has a whole. Oh you God. can just pick a whole bunch of them. You just look at all of them. And he knows Sorry, this. Chuck. <laughs> uh, I have one. My wife and I were going to get the same tattoo. I, I drew it up. It was a, a pig in a frying pan stabbing himself in the stomach with a fork. I love it. <laughs> so I drew it up. I, I, I put it. I tattooed it on my own left leg down by my my ankle it's i couldn't reach the spot it's so blown out it looks like total shit you can't even tell what it is the pig looks like i don't know it's a total mess she comes in my tattoo room that night and she's like i i don't want that I'm like we don't want that i had already tattooed her earlier that day and she's like um so she claims that she was just didn't want a tattoo that night but i'm like you're not allowed to have it now Unless you want it as shitty as I did mine, you can't have it. So, I'm like anxious to. I'll, I'll get that one covered up soon. Oh hopefully. my god! That Sam's reminds me of your little, s- of your little right snake. Now. Your yeah. little snake. That he has one that he did on him. On what side? On your left leg. On my left leg. On your left leg that you drew and tattooed. <sighs> and I remember seeing. It just looks like a black blob now. But I was like, oh, that's cool. That's a little snake. And he's like, it's not a snake. It's a panther, right? Yeah, it's a panther. It's <laughs> not. It's. It looks like a lizard and a snake. It's pretty funny. It's so <sighs> small. It's very dark. It's just like it's a snake. It's yeah, it, it's, it's snake. super small and blown out. So it's like, you know, black splotch <laughs> kind of going in an S shape up my leg. It's, it's snake panther. Yeah, yeah, snake panther. You know, uh, Sailor yeah. Jerry drew a bunch of them. <laughs> snake panthers all yeah, over the place. Yeah. It's custom, though. It's special. Yeah, with, with a Q. Custom with a Q. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm slowly getting my shit covered up on my, on my arms. I got, I, I decided when I was like, well, I don't even know how old I was. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get these flames on my arms, both arms the same. Cause everything's got to be symmetrical. Like a dumbass. I, I had to put on, they looked like shit. And then I had another friend do like a black flame behind it. So it looked a little bit better. And now I'm like, I just, they look stupid. Please cover them. So I have a buddy in Virginia. He's covering them with these like bright tentacles and it, it looks way less flamey. But the last time I was there, he like, just, he's like, I'm, I'm good now. What were, he's like, are you done? I'm like, I'm, I've had enough. I'm good for this time. And I have like this harsh line where it just stops and I can never get back up there. It's like, it's like a seven hour drive, seven, oh, no. seven hour drive. So I try to plan it when I'm going through because we go to Jersey all the time from Florida and I'm, it just never works out. Every time I go through, I'm like, I don't, I don't have time to stop right now. Where so in Florida I'm are you at? We are just west of Gainesville. Gainesville. It's like the north middle. 
Okay, so it's yeah. not like you're having to drive from like the tip of Florida all the way up. Yeah, you know? yeah, because no, like that's no. that's the the terrible drive that Texas has. Like anytime oh. you're trying to get out of Texas, it's like I had imagined oh, driving God. from South Florida to anywhere is like that. Man, the drive across we drove across Texas. Uh, the hell year was it? It was like probably 2011, I think. And the whole ride, we're like. I'm, I keep telling my wife, I'm like, you see as far as you can see? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, we got to go past that. And then we got to go past it again. There's nothing out here. We can see like <laughs> fires. That was cool. A whole lot of dirt. Yeah. Once you get into West Texas, there's not a whole lot of anything uh, at all. I mean, we have was, a lot of spots in Texas that are just desolate. But, you know, West Texas, there's nothing between basically yeah. here and El Paso. And, uh, no. yeah, there's there's moments where you're like, man, I probably should have stopped for gas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we she, she's seen way too many horror movies. So everything was like everything we pull off the main road. She's like texting her mom like this is where we're at in case it's the last time you hear from me. Sending pins like this is our location right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. if you get she, she service. Yeah. If you get service yeah, yeah, out right? that far. Yeah. It, oh. We're in Austin and she's like, you need to buy a spare alternator just in case. I'm like, why alternator? She's like, I don't know. I just you need to spot. You need to buy one. <laughs> so I, I bought one in a junkyard in Austin, and uh, we got all the way out. We went to Vegas and then back home. We were living in Pennsylvania then. The alternator went when I got home, and it was oh. the wrong one. So I'm like, thank God it didn't go when we were in like Arizona or something. It was the oh, wrong one real. anyway. For real, what were you driving? Uh, my panel truck, '65. Oh, that's awesome. We had just, just got it. And, uh, we got it. We, I did a bunch of body work on it. We took it up to my buddy in Virginia or down to my buddy then Virginia and, uh, painted it all up. And then that was in like March. We finished painting it. And then April, we drove it to Texas. She's like, should we like test drive this? I'm like, this is a test drive. (laughs) (laughs) This is the reliability run. Yeah, yeah. And then while we were in, after we were in Austin for Roundup, and we were, we met this couple from Australia, and the dude was planning on going to Viva. And uh, he's like, that's his, the car he bought to take there broke down. So he's like, you can have my car pass or tickets or whatever. And she's like, that's, my wife's like, that's kind of the wrong direction. I'm like, yeah, but it's Viva Las Vegas. We'll go. What could go wrong? <laughs> so we, uh, yeah, yeah, we drove out to that, and it was we did horrible at it, but it was still fun. It was we got drunk in a tiki bar, and I got hooked up with the uh, tiki farm at the show, so that helped me out a little bit. Oh, that's but badass! It was, it was a we hadn't done anything on the inside of the truck yet, so it was just a rattle. It was so loud. There's no weather stripping. I had speakers like zip tied to the walls in there just yelling what the whole ride out there <laughs> by the time we got back we were, we were driving through we missed the there was a joplin tornado in missouri that ripped everything up we were like running from that she's got the app like watching the weather i don't i just keep driving i don't i don't know where we're going i don't i i, I just drive that's my job right so uh she's like trying to avoid the storm and by the time we got to kentucky she's like all i want is barbecue i just want some brisket and we get to this one barbecue joint and it was closed and it was pouring rain she's crying she's like i'm just so over this whole mess uh, all right so we, we know we those situations like, very well oh, yeah yeah at least this truck is is fairly smooth like now it's i just put ac on it and it's it's pretty nice it rides fairly nice it has some issues but for the most part it's not like a and I think it's, I forget what, the dude who I got it from had done a bunch of work to it, like with the su- suspension and everything. So it's pretty new-ish. It's got like a 98, 350 in it. Oh, okay, so speeds. a little bit more reliable than just, uh, yeah. you know, thrown together junkyard engine. Yeah, yeah. Our trans went at one in Tennessee at one point, but that was was perfect because we had a, oh, we just got a uh, four-speed in it and that went and then we got we went from the 350 to a 400 and then that went we had a rebuilt in tennessee and when it broke down she's always nervous my wife's like panicky nervous about everything we're in the truck 
when it broke down, she's just sitting there taking photos. She's like, this is the calmest I've been the whole time. I'm like, what? Cause nothing else can go wrong. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> we can only go up from here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that was another, that was another Austin trip. Cause we left Pennsylvania and she's like, something sounds funny. I'm like, ah, just turn the radio. Up. I don't care. We're good. And it was on the way home from, from, uh, Austin, to Pennsylvania that it, it just started to take shit. She's like, something definitely doesn't sound right now. And then we're climbing this mountain and it just, totally took a shit oh man yeah we've had we've had plenty of uh instances of that on the road i think uh i I was never a mechanic ever uh until i got you know into old cars and then it was like every time i'd take one out for a reliability run yeah that's uh where i'd be on the side of the road learning what you know what part of the mechanics i'm gonna be in today Uh you have Uh that i always just knew enough just enough, yeah. right? Barely. Yeah, barely. <laughs> That's pretty much where I'm at with mine. I'm like, you know what? I don't really care to learn about like how everybody else works on their car. I just need to know how to fix mine if I'm broken down on the side of the road. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. It's always, every one of the cars I've had has always had some stupid little issue or trying to figure out something. Things falling off it. I mean, the poor pile truck was like, that, that road trip, things were falling off at the whole ride out <laughs> and then uh it, like our exhaust was hanging through arizona <laughs> dragging on the highway there had to be sparks everywhere and nobody warns me nobody like beeps or anything they just like wave and go by and yeah I, i'm laying on the side of the road in arizona like trying to hang her the exhaust back up <laughs> that was my very first car that i took to round up that was a 51 chevy that i had and the exhaust was hanging low, like already. And we right. get to round up and a buddy of mine jumps in my car and reverses it. He's like, hey, I'm going to go grab your car because I had parked like way far away from it where everybody else was at. So he's like, I'm going to go grab your car and bring it over here where we're at. And I'm like, OK. And when he comes over, like the my car is a little bit louder than, you know, than it had been. <laughs> And uh, he goes, something happened when I put it in reverse and I looked underneath the car and the uh, all of the exhaust was gone. So it was just straight open uh, header. Nice. Car sounds really good now. Let's yeah. That. Sounds mean. Yeah. 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 It's always best to just leave it to you. As soon as something falls off, you just keep going. Yeah. I didn't need to be there in the first place. No. Just no, like when uh, all these people want to cut their catalytic converters off just so it sounds meaner, I guess. Right. right. <laughs> I, I, I am guilty when I was uh, much younger of like trying to make my car backfire to blow my exhaust up. <laughs> nice. I had a, I had an old, uh, old Monte Carlo and we like me and my wife were first dating in like early nineties. And I would just like stomp on the gas and the thing would backfire. And you'd see the fire, like the blast of fire on the, the median. <laughs> and then she was impressed so i had to do it over and over again until just totally naturally blew up. of yeah. course yeah do it again do it again yeah oops oh what's man. your, your buick's uh, uh what year's the buick you guys got a 59 it's a 1959 right. yeah it's a 59 flat top four door i like four doors i mm. like really long fin cars beast oh yeah that's so you have a garage that fits in or Nope, it, it <laughs> proudly is in the driveway or the street, nice. and people people always nice. ask me. They're just like, "Aren't you scared somebody's gonna hit it?" I was like, "No, because their car is gonna be ruined, not mine." Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I got a buddy down there, and, and I think he's in Austin now. Who's got a '59 Caddy, and he's like, "I had to find a house with a garage big enough." He's like, "They just don't make them big enough anymore." No. <laughs> And this is a two door. I mean, the four door is probably your view is probably huge compared to that. Too. It takes up most of the driveway, and the driveway is up like a small slanted hill. So I'll try and finagle it up there, but I reverse it all the way into the into our driveway. And uh, I think the only car that's ever fit in our garage was your Model A. Yeah. That was the only thing. Yeah. My Thunderbird didn't fit. The Plymouth didn't fit. Yeah, no, because I like big fin cars. So I already knew. I was like, yeah, that ain't going to fit. <laughs> no. Yeah, it was definitely like yeah, that, but- that cartoon of the guy with the one car garage and he cuts slits out of the side of his garage yeah. to fit the fins. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. that's yeah. this Buick for sure. <laughs> the Plymouth too. Uh-huh. The Plymouth was like that. I, we had a 60 Plymouth that was just, I mean, Ooh. just giant fins. Uh, but we kind of like that kind of shit. So, 
I like yeah. driving boats. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. go in the water on a boat. I'll just drive one on no. land. Yeah, land yacht. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cruise, a certain vibe they have. Like I had an old, my, my first uh, cool car what was a 66 Pontiac. And that thing was like, it was a beast, big monster. It just, it had like a, like you kind of glide down the road. Like just, you'd be doing like 90, but you just like gliding perfectly. Yeah, they have that like floating feel to them. Like it's really yeah. cool. Yeah. The only thing that's uh a little bit rough about Sam's Buick is the uh that it's on airbags and mm. no struts or shocks of any sort. <laughs> so it's just the airbags. So you get to go so. on a roller coaster when I hit a bump. It's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. But you know, we're yeah. we're slowly getting to the point where we're, you know, basically knocking things off that list, you know, as we get down it. Like, you know, she has a bunch of things that she wants done with this car. So yes. it'll get there. I want to reach the pedals and not have a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't How reach. How tall are you? Are you like a, are you a small one too? I'm not that small. I'm like five, five. I'm pretty good height. I uh, just, I just nope. can't. Wow. <laughs> three, five, three. <laughs> My wife's five foot. It's straight so, up five foot, huh? Yeah, yeah. I said you have to say it with authority. I mean, you're that little, you got to say it. Hey, it's better than 4'11", damn it. Yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's coming. As soon as she's older, she'll be 4'11". Yeah, I was going to say, you eventually shrink <laughs> after a while. Yeah. Once you hit a certain yeah. age, you just start going reverse. You start shrinking. But no, yeah, I've like never, the- I've never been able to reach the pedals in any car we've ever owned. And uh, everyone always asks that because they'll see a pillow in the front seat and they're like, hey, I'm like, no, it's because I can't reach. <laughs> it's not, uh-huh. I promise you, it's not anything crazy. It's because I legit cannot reach the pedals if that was the case. Uh-huh. You got to get mean, those little, uh, little blocks for the pedals. Right? <laughs> or make make sure she's wearing like wedged heels everywhere I she goes. I pedal, right. remember? <laughs> I did that once. Oh, that's right. That's and right. I almost killed us because I was like, oh, I'm just going to put a little pressure. Oh, and I'm going like 90. <laughs> <laughs> in a tan uh, probably not smart i mean what's the seat like in your beer too is it like old and, and warm from somebody else driving it that you're even sitting even lower fairly worn yeah yeah, yeah fairly worn and uh it adjusts but even at factory settings for the adjustment she still doesn't reach the pedals that well i have to like <laughs> basically hug my wheel Right. So everyone right. looks at me weird because they're like, well, why don't you like relax and sit back? I was like, then I wouldn't drive. We'd be stuck in the <laughs> road. This is relaxed. Yeah, this is yeah. as relaxed as it gets. This folks. is comfy for me. <laughs> uh, my, my entire high school driving my Pontiac, I had my science book shoved in my seat because it was so worn out from the guy before me. <laughs> <laughs> you sink and down I, in the seat. The, yeah, it was like I just put this on my little science book. I just jammed it in there. It was like a hard cover book and it it kind of stiffened the seat up at the end of the year. I get my book back and it seems like it's not even, the seals not even broken. I'm like, yeah, I know that I, I used it. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I used it where it I counted. Mean, I mean, yeah. I may have gotten an F in your class, but no, uh, I don't need science for it anyway. No, absolutely not. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, we, we jumped into this conversation talking about crappy art. Uh, and we're actually talking to one of the most amazing artists, in my opinion. So let's jump into that side of, side of the categories here. Squindo, how did you get into the you know drawing and, and to the level that you're at? My level? <laughs> I draw goofy cartoons. So that's a, my level. Uh, I don't know. I've been drawing... I always drew cartoons, goofy stuff since I was little, I guess. I know my, my parents, like, would, I think I claim that my dad was training me, but he just scribble on a paper and he's like, find pictures in the scribbles. I think he would, I was just a puppy annoying kid and he needed to shut me up. <laughs> so he was like, do these things, I guess. But uh, I guess, I don't know, I just, I was always drawn from, yeah, I was, I was super quiet as a kid in school and everything. So I, I, it was the only way I'd like talk to people. I'd draw stupid shit and impress the girls. And, uh, I don't know. That was, that was my thing. I, I, and I found, um, I, I forget. It was probably like, it was probably like fifth or sixth grade. And I found cartoon magazine. 
Mm. I mean, I was always into like Mad Magazine and, and that kind of stuff. And then I found Cartoon Magazine and I got heavy into that. So it was like drawing cars and drawing cool little people. And yeah, that's, that was kind of the beginning of it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I've always been a, like a big fan of Cartoon Magazine. And then they started coming back with some things. I think our friend Menace was working with them for yep. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I one, one picture in one episode, one issue. Did you really? Like inside, I think it was the inside cover of, I forget what issue it was. Yeah, I was pretty excited to do it, though, because, I mean, I was, that was my my go-to i still have like all the old ones i was collecting back then but it was like sean carey her art was like my vibe i just love that shit and that's awesome yeah that that feeling of like that i've i've looked at this magazine as a kid and and flipped through these pages a ton of times and then to get to a level where you're in it i I think i think for anybody in any trade that they're into like that's a that's a big step I, i love that right you know, right. being able to get into like, a car magazine for something that you built, you know, that, right. that for any mechanic, that's like the, the dream right there. That's pretty awesome. I, uh, I mean, I, I probably traced half the drawings that she did back then, like just practicing and, and I don't know. <laughs> I wish I had a fancier answer, but that was... I mean, that was it. Just oh no, Chuck! Chuck doesn't like fancy answers on this show. He he told us. I could, could. Yeah, remember yeah. we're going back I'll to the, the one word answers. I will dumb this shit down. Hey, you want you want dumb answers? I, I got you covered. <laughs> we we got that covered. Absolutely, I right. love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I met you. Oh uh, man, it it was at a hot rod shop in Austin years ago. It was like an after party from Roundup, and uh, right. and my buddy Clint introduced me to you. And and at that time, I wasn't familiar with any of your art, any you know anything. And I was just like right. blown away that we we're just standing there talking. I was like, really, like this is what you're into. This is what you do, like you know. <laughs> And I always tell Clint that I like, you know, I, uh, I even had him on one of our episodes a while back for another podcast. And I was like, man, that like, I appreciate that. Cause I had no idea who you were. And when you, when he introduced oh, awesome. us, I was like, man, I've, I've, I've followed you ever since. I think I immediately became friends with you on Facebook at that point. <laughs> that, that might've been around 2011. I would imagine. Is that the, that was her. That was our first roundup. Yeah. 2011. Yeah. And we've done like a bunch of shows up here. I mean, in Jersey and Pennsylvania and Northeast, but that we had a 54 Chevy back then that was stock and it was like, it was rough. Like we couldn't go far at all in that thing. And uh, it was very crusty. <laughs> and then we got the, the paddle truck and it was like, we, the, we were friends in Virginia that helped get all the painting and everything. They were like, you got to hit these shows up. And that was like, and we were so hooked on round up. We got down there. I mean, the whole scene there was super cool. We, we tried to move there like a few years later and uh, we were too late. There was like nothing in our price range. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. was maybe an hour outskirts and it was still, it was still like crazy. Yeah. No, if you, you know, in now even it's, it's gotten even worse. Uh, oh God. San Antonio is like, the closest to Austin that we could ever live. <laughs> yeah, screw that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, is, yeah. it is crowded like crazy, uh, constantly yeah. under construction. Uh, but yeah, at several years ago, like everybody just made that mass exodus of California and yeah. jumped into, yeah. into Texas. And it's, I mean, we there's like just a last time we roundup was a few years ago, like three years ago. I forget what the whole, missing years and everything but it was even then it was like it got so crazy the whole thing was like congress was a mess it was all full of like little tuna cars and it was just it was rough and the the highways around there were crazy and i I don't like big cities we grew up in like the middle of new jersey and i i ran away from it all i like a little more quiet so like we last time we were around up we stayed way out on the outskirts and uh just came in for the show went out a couple times for barbecue and just stayed on the outside edge. 
less painful. Man, talking about like big cities and like not wanting to be in them. See, like San Antonio is a huge city, but it's right. spread out. And, you know, you have to take the highways everywhere you know, around here because there's no like just walking down. You know, there's not uh, it, unless you're like directly downtown, there's none of that. So right. uh, there's when, like a cute little downtown area there. Uh, we have the river walk that everybody likes to go right, to. Right. Uh, right. And, and so you can there, walk so. around that area. And basically that's just a mall and then a bunch of like uh, like monument kind of things. Uh, but right. anywhere outside of that, like you have to drive, it, everything's just so spread out. But then when me uh, and, uh, when me and Samo went up to New York, that was just a complete <laughs> culture shock. I mean, I fucking absolutely. hated yeah. it. I hated it. Oh my God. <laughs> Every it. time we drive, I used to, we were, I grew up 45 minutes from there. So we'd drive up for shows. There was no doubt somebody was going to lose a mirror. Something was going to get hit. We got lost every time i'd miss one turn and we were just it was always a shit show when we go there <laughs> before the, the good I old went, days but, of gps oh yeah even with it i still get lost i am <laughs> i'm like i'm great at it we were we went up for a show an art show years ago and me and my wife and her brother i took one wrong turn and we spent an hour just doing loops we could see the highway we we're supposed to be on we were in like I think we were in like Harlem or something. It was, it was not a good area to be lost in. And we were just like lights on maps out and so misplaced. Like we never got to the art show. We just, sure, we finally got off that road, got home, like screw it. We're done. The last <laughs> so, time we went, I'm not doing this. <laughs> no, no. The last time we were in New York was for a Metallica show. And we, uh, we had just gotten home from some, I think it was roundup. We did a show in Tennessee and then we got home in the panel truck. The next day was Metallica at a smaller venue. So we're like, screw it, we're going. So our other car was still is my 98 Mazda pickup. It's not good. It rides, it, it sounds like it's always screaming. It's a very excited little truck. <laughs> but it's we lived on, there. We lived on, yeah, we lived on top of a mountain, man. So we start driving down the mountain to go to the show and my brakes are just metal on metal. So she's freaked out, of course, but I keep driving because the show was just that night, you know, we get to New York. By the time we get to New York, she wasn't even looking up. Her head was just down. She was like borderline crying. She's like, <laughs> why? We could have taken the panel truck. It would have been a little bit easier, but oh, we, we get to the show after the show. It was like, there's an, uh, I think there was an after party. Yeah, there was. And I'm like, well, we got to go. I mean, if we're invited. We got to go. She's like, I just want to go home. The whole time she's just like, I, I don't want to be here anymore. And then the ride home, I didn't touch the brakes at all. I just downshifted the whole time. And <laughs> we got back. And the next day of the brakes, I'm like, these were really bad. I've driven on bad brakes before, but this this was like paper thin. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man. So we made it. So it's an adventure. Yeah, always, always. Oh, now, always. Our adventures always happen in 100 degree weather. We don't plan that. That's just what happens. <laughs> Plus Texas, right? It's like Florida now. Everything's in 100 degree weather. Yeah. 100 and humid, always. Uh, yeah. Y'all know that. that. Florida is surrounded by that, water. Like, Y'all yeah. know that it's humid. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know it was this bad. <laughs> <laughs> the winter's are pretty perfect here. I gotta say that. We were so sick and tired of the Northeast winters and the, the shoveling your roof off. The oh, hell no. It's just miserable. No, yeah, Texas, I, I, I'm Texas, not made for it. <laughs> Texas takes their weather on steroids. If it's hot, it's going to be incredibly hot. Uh, and if it's cold, it's going to be fucking cold. Yeah. Like to the yeah. point where you can't do anything. It's n it's no longer cute or fun. And once no. one day out of the entire year, we'll be like, man, this day is perfect. And you'll never get uh, another one <laughs> ever again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <it's> so sad. <laughs> I got a buddy who moved from la to some small town just south of dallas and right after during covid i guess and he uh it was there was this it was like the coldest i think ever there he had like snow on his lawn he's like where did i move into I'm like he's never seen snow and you're like in texas you're getting snow and ice cold weather I'm like sorry 
<laughs> yeah, so and the, the, the problem anymore. is and is that he moved to a spot that's never seen snow either. So it was a complete oh, anomaly. Yeah. And then yeah, the city shuts down. <laughs> yeah. There are ice cubes yeah. in the road, and they're gonna think it's snow, and they'll freak yeah. out. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they call it black our, ice. Um, yeah. One of my wife's um, demands when we're moving is like, I want to move to a city or a town where they do not have any snow plows. I'm like, all right, well, yeah, there's definitely no snow plows here. <laughs> not at all. Now, you've done some artwork for Metallica. You know, do you t- do you typically get invited out to a lot of their shows or when they're going to be close by in the vicinity? If they're if we're in the area or they're in our area, I we usually go to a show. We'll we'll try to go to as many as we can when they're close by or like there's there was like um a few that we would fly out to California for and we just the last one we did was the uh symphony thing. Oh did. yeah. It was the second one. It was the first when I first started working for them was the first one. And uh we got invited to that one in New York. So we did that and I'm like, well, we have to go. It's been like, I don't know how long it's been, 20, I don't know what year it was. I don't know what year it is. <laughs> I, don't know. I think it's the 20th anniversary of the, the SM thing. So we flew out for that. But usually, I think if they're nearby, I'll, I'll message the management or whatever. And they're, they're always cool. And they've been with them since 99. So it's, they're usually always cool what made that happen like what was the the clicking factor for you to start working for them uh um i'll go back a little bit earlier when i first dating my wife again i saw them uh it was in new jersey them and danzig and suicidal and mm. this cool place we used to go to all the time in jersey and uh i was very and we were working shitty jobs, multiple jobs at the time, just trying to stay afloat. And I had been banging on bus tours trying to do artwork for bands for a while. And uh, we walked into this venue, and I'm like, this is this is it. I want to work for these guys. I would love to work for these guys. There's, there's my style. It's not exactly my style, but it's like skulls and evil shit. And uh, like someday, and she's like, this is Metallica. They can hire anybody in the world. They you know, pull yourself down a little bit, come back to reality. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so I still hold, I, I held that against her for a long time. Like, uh-huh. But, uh, one of the, when we were up in Jersey still, we had been back and forth to Pennsylvania, Jersey. We were living in her parents' basement and, uh, there was a, a local venue we'd go to all the time. And Kid Rock was playing there. He was, this was like, early on he just said uh devil at a cause mm-hmm. devil yeah that album just come out so it was like the venue's small it was a tiny little place and uh we go in there and she was doing photography too at the time so he was at the back bar and we go back and we're bullshitting with him a little bit and uh it was like nobody in this place either and he's cool they said take some photos wherever so we did that. And then the next time he was in Jersey, we showed him the photos and I had done some goofy artwork of him. And he was like, do more goofy artwork. It was very easy to draw. He was like a, a cartoon character in himself. Right. In real life, he's a cartoon character. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, then he was playing again. I had a bunch of sample shirts I made up. I was working at a teacher shop too. So I like printed up some shirts to show him. And uh, drove into New York to see him. And we wind our way through the back to uh, the dressing room. And it was like, the dressing room was jam-packed with people. It's like a total like, rock star party, like wall-to-wall crazy screaming people. And uh, I, again, I was like super quiet. Like he's in the back corner talking to somebody. I don't want to bother him. I'll just wait for it to quiet down, which he never is going to quiet down. And my wife's like, he's talking to Lars. She's like, squeeze your way back there. So uh, she kind of worked her way back. She's way better. Again, being small, she's way better getting through crowds. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, Sam's the same way. I'm a bulldozer. Yeah. I'm a bully. Uh-huh. Especially, you know, yeah. crowds. She'll get to the front net, right next to a stage in a heartbeat. Like she and she does not care. She will push people out of the yeah. way. <laughs> it's that, that 
what does it mean? That's what it is. <laughs> get your way through. Oh, yes, absolutely. She got me back there, and uh, I start talking and showing the shit off, and Lars was into it. He's like, he asked me for a card. I'm like, I don't have cards. And I'm like, some dipshit. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> on me. So he wrote the he wrote his manager's number on like a piece of paper bag, and uh, I was like sweating. I become it was it was July anyway in New York, but we're like I was just like dripping in sweat, like freaking out because I had been a fan of theirs for since high school, you know. Yeah. And uh, I waited months before I even called the manager because I'm like just too freaked out. And then my family did. They said do some artwork and see what happens. And that tour, I had not the the best selling, but I had the second, third, and fourth best selling shirts on the tour. Oh, that's so wild! It like, and it was it was Metallica, Kid Rock, and Seven Dust tour. So we the first show we did, we they flew us to Minneapolis for the, my first. It was the first time I met them and everything. And uh, we we walk into the arena, and it was like I had a shirt, I had a design, I put on like a white shirt. And metallic, everything's like black, you know, it's all nice and evil. Right. And uh, these white shirts were everywhere. And it was, I had Kid Rock art in some of the merch booths and Metallica art in some merch booths. My wife's like crying. We're like walking up to every shirt so I could see my signature on it. We're like, look at that shit. Look at that. And uh, it was like a total freak out. And then we get, they met the manager, they bring us backstage and we're like just meeting these dudes and like hearing. Hetfield say my name. He's walking down the hallway and he's like, Squindo. And I'm like, oh my God. Introduced himself. I'm like, I know who you are, dude. <laughs> you do not need to do that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they kept me busy since then. It's, it's every year. I just keep, keep going. And luckily they keep liking what I'm doing, I guess. So keep it going. Absolutely, man. Do you, do you have a count as to how much you've like, how many shirts that you've put out with them or is it just too many to even think of? During COVID I decided to, um, file everything. Like I have, I have discs with stuff on it. I mean, nobody uses discs anymore. (laughs) uh, Floppy disc. I I love it. it, Yeah. Right. right? I got one picture on this disc. (laughs) That's all it can hold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's how many megabytes? Oh, it's one. It's one. one. <laughs> I love but, uh, it. Yeah, I, I have a, a whole like zip drive now. Not a zip drive. Just, again, it's all uh, external. That's just filled with everything I've done for them. That's and so luckily, wild. like they, there's been a few times that they want to reissue something, and they're like, "Do you still have that file from 2004?" I'm like, yeah, "I know I do." I have it somewhere. It's just give me a day. I'll find it. Oh man. That is absolutely I mean, they, wild. What, what's been like the, the coolest thing to come out of all of that? Like, you know, it, it, just with all the artwork or, you know, meeting folks going to their shows, like how, you know, what's like the best uh, memory you have from all of that? I'll go back. My, my best memory, like meeting them, I mean, meeting them was, this was amazing, but uh, we met them. Uh, we went to a, another show. I, I, my family, my parents were like hippies. So they kind of didn't really understand it. And uh, I took them to a show. My, my parents, they were probably like in their 70s at this point. Or early 70s, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I bring them to a show in Philadelphia. And, uh, and I'm like, we can go wherever we want. We can sneak through. I mean, you're, I'm walking around with a couple of older people at a value show. Nobody really questions it. So we worked our way all the way backstage, not backstage, but in this back area. And uh, the band was doing a meet and greet. And we were kind of friends with the the security guys. So we were just bullshitting with them a little bit. And I'm like, if it's cool, I'd like to introduce my parents to the to Hetfield. And uh, he did his, he did the meet and greet and he started to walk away. And then I'm like, yeah, sometimes shit doesn't happen. You know, it's just, they're busy. They got shit going on. He's going to perform in front of thousands of people in a, half hour so he doesn't right. really have time to do but then uh his security guy like pulled him back and he comes up and he's like I introduced me to my parents and my parents thanked him for having me work for him and then he thanked my parents for having me oh. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like all right that's cool 
this is awkward now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, we, they, watched the show. they watched about, yeah, yeah. It was like, he's super cool anyway, but we, my parents watched half the show and they're like, we, we, we understand why you like it, but we're, we're going to go now. <laughs> it's like fists in the air screaming die. And they're like, all right, we're, we're done. <laughs> Come on. All right. yeah i would imagine that that would be like uh, you know my folks going shock. with us to like going to uh, going to like some of the car shows that we go to but yeah. you know to, yeah. to have hetfield thank your parents for your existence that's that's pretty yeah, huge pretty epic man. <laughs> yeah. what and everything you- i do with them is is pretty awesome and they, they've always been super cool so it's it's hard to pick but that was that was pretty awesome. No, that that is man, that is wild. Uh, what have you done outside of working for Metallica? Like lately, what have, what are you know you finding yourself doing a lot of right now? Uh, well, but from working with them, I got a bunch of other bands. I've, I've done them because of them. You know, mm-hmm. they're a good resume piece. But uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I've been busy with a few car show flyers here and there. I did, um, I'm working more with Tiki Forum. I got a couple of new things coming out with them. Um, I've been working on my own stuff like crazy through, I've had this one project that I was telling you about. I emailed you about. Mm-hmm. And yep. uh, I started working on this thing. I had the idea for it in 2004. <laughs> and I was working on it on and off. It always gets pushed to the back burner. And uh, when the whole shutdown happened, I had, I mean, I had all this tour stuff going on with Metallica right before that. And then that they, they couldn't tour. So I had no work at all. Luckily, well, they hit me up with the Monopoly. I, I decided a, a second Monopoly board for them, which lasted a good couple months of work. And at the same time, I managed to almost cut my arm off. So oh, that was down. It was a total, that's a whole other story. <laughs> I, uh, so I was down for another few months, but then I was able to get back to this book and start working on this thing that I had, had put aside again. So I worked on it pretty steady through COVID and I got, it's supposed to, it's going to be a book of three stories. I had the first one finished through COVID. The second one is almost done now and the third one is a smaller story so i I, I should get it banged out and i'm hoping to have the books done by like september i'm hoping it for a show in jersey and then i definitely need to have it for roundup that is awesome yeah we had we had talked a little bit about it before and we had talked about having you come back on the show uh closer to when uh when you're you know ready to promote and and put it out to the world uh you know so yeah incentive for me to get my ass on going and get it done (laughs) because if you don't you're gonna have about five people out there that are pissed off no i'm just kidding exactly exactly (laughs) maybe six maybe. maybe six no, when uh, when we looked at our numbers, uh, you know, this is my shout out to all the people that listen to this show. Thank you uh, for one, because when we looked at our numbers, uh, you know, we we're getting like close to like a thousand people downloading the show, and awesome. downloads doesn't even like is not typically a drop in the bucket compared to people who are no, listening no. to it because not everybody downloads their podcast. So mm-hmm. we're pretty stoked about this. I don't think I've ever downloaded one, but I don't know if I know how to download them. <laughs> it's okay. We run the show, and I don't even know how to do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it would, what's I'm messed up, up is... The Zoom. I couldn't figure that out. I'm like, what's wrong? What am I doing? What am I missing on the Zoom thing? Am I missing a button? Oh. I don't know what I'm... I don't know. Technology is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it really is. What, what's messed up about all of it, though, is that... Uh, Apple and Spotify only run numbers on things that are downloaded. So we have no clue yeah. what goes on beyond that. So if you have a thousand, I'm sure there's, it's, you gotta have a shit ton. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. I, I would imagine. So we're pretty stoked about that. So, you know, we'll definitely have you back on the show. People will have already listened to this episode and be interested cool. to, to hear what's going on with, uh, with what you've got coming out later on this year. I'm already cool. stoked about it. So hopefully our listeners is, will be too. 
it's very monster hot rod based. So, and it's got a whole lot of cool little shit going on too. Did you see the, the coloring book that they put out with all of the bears cars? I've heard about it. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, Menace has a car in it and Johnny Jalopy has a car in yeah. it. Uh, and yeah. I think that's I was his, awesome. I was listening to his podcast with you guys and uh, I heard, that's where I think where I heard about it. His stuff's cool too. He's great. Yeah. I still I haven't met him, but he's down here. So we need to hang out. Yeah. Johnny. Yeah. He's uh he's super nice to talk to. And then he supports like everything that we're doing. So like, he's right. always like jumping on our live feeds when, when he can and, you know, checking cool. in with us. And then when we had him on the show, like he was just, you know, pleasant to talk to. Like, I can't right. wait to have him come to Texas. That would be great. I keep telling everybody they need to come here. Cause I don't want to go anywhere yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's my wife's, plan here she doesn't want to go anywhere anymore after the last few trips she's like well let's just stay local I'm you like, have scarred this woman now. you have scarred this woman enough i have heard you made her Jeez. cry like five times in this whole episode. <laughs> like this poor woman she's you gonna no run out, she's gonna run out of tears <laughs> and well, then that it kind of brings me back to my cut my arm off I, I think i've given her ptsd so bad from that episode uh, have you ever seen on Facebook or the ads for this? It's a, a orange grinder with a chainsaw blade on it. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Do not buy one. Never buy one. They're eight dollars. Don't buy it. Oh my god. <laughs> it, it's they're deadly. I mean, I shouldn't have taken off the safety and I shouldn't have taken off the handle, but they were both in my way. <laughs> It was a poor design to begin with. That's it was, not your it fault. Was. No, no. And um, oh my God. two years ago, almost the date two years ago, I'm out in the yard. She comes in to take a shower after working in the yard all day. Of course, when she's I not out this, there anymore. No <laughs> supervision. Yeah. No super. I totally need supervision. It's, it's gotten horrible now. I'm not allowed to do anything. She's like, nothing dangerous. Every day I hear this now. Nothing dangerous. I wasn't, this wasn't planned anyway, though. So I'm crouched down in front of a, a giant log trying to carve a tiki with this amazing tool. And uh, it bites the wood. And when it bites it, it kind of jerks the tool out of your hand a little bit. Mm. So it, it did it once. And I'm like, shit, I got to be careful. But I go right back into it. And uh, the second time it bites really good and rips out of my left hand, spins around and hits my left forearm from, it's about a good six inch gash. It went straight down my arm as I'm throwing it. And then it bounced off my knee and hit the ground. It's like the ground is just on. So it's bouncing all over the place. I, I grab my arm and I'm holding, just holding it with my dirty ass glove on. And I, I slowly lift it up. I'm like, oh, shit. It's just totally gouged open. You can see everything. It's like it was luckily a new blade, so it cut a really sweet gouge. Right, nice and clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was like luckily it wasn't gushing. There was no blood. It was bleeding all over the place, but it wasn't like spitting. Yeah. So I, uh, she is impressed with this. She, I went inside the garage, unplugged the grinder, went closed the garage door and locked it. I uh, put a shop rag over it, a, a fairly clean shop rag. I went through our house. I like locked all the doors. I got like a, a shower curtain, a tarp or something I had, and I put it on the seat of the car so I could sit down without getting blood everywhere. And I, I come upstairs and I'm just yelling hospital to her. <laughs> and I, see her, I love it. Her little head, her little head pops out of the bathroom. She's like, what did you do? She, she called me an asshole multiple times as she's getting ready. We get in the car and she, we have a, a little Honda and she got the thing up to like 90. <laughs> and then we hit traffic. They're like paving our roads down here. The roads in Florida are glass compared to anywhere I've ever been. <laughs> they paved it. They paved the roads every day. So 
I'm like, I'm just holding my arm. I should like pass everybody, just pass them. She's like, I, I can't pass them. They have me held up. I'm like, please just pass. And we get to this emergency place like 15 minutes, probably. By the time we get there, I couldn't see anywhere. Everything was like white. Yeah. She misses a turn. She like flies into this into this hospital. She's like, jump out, jump out. I'm like, I can't see. I can't jump out. <laughs> and this is like June, so it was like COVID just is kind of like hopping, you know. We just run in. They they're like, you guys need masks. I'm like, I, I don't need a mask right now. They take you really quick if you're bleeding all over the place, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's service right there. That's the first thing they teach <laughs> yeah. you. They're like, blood yeah. trumps tummy ache, which get them now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They did a really good job, but they gave me morphine first. that did nothing. I'm just like, I still feel, I'm like, this is still sucking. So then it gave me, um, I always say it wrong. I think it's the lot in. The lot in. Mm. I don't know. It's like for pregnant women or people giving birth or something. So they shoot me up with that shit, and I was smiling. I'm like looking at it. I hate, I hate guts, and I'm like staring at this shit. Like I can sew it up. I I'm can do good. this myself. <laughs> yeah, I could save a lot of money if I just stitched it myself. But they're, they're stitching that up, and then I look down at my knee, and I, I like pull my shorts up, and I, I have a tattoo I did of a chipmunk on my knee, and. uh his eye is gone. I like cut it right through his eye. Oh my God. As a doctor's walking in, the doctor's like, you cut your knee too. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so he's like, all right, I'll start stitching that up. <laughs> so as yeah, my poor wife is so traumatized by this whole debacle. She's like, I, I can't like, I had to use the grinder again later with just like a regular grinding wheel on it. She's standing in the room, like holding both hands on the extension cords. She's like, when shit goes bad, I'm just going to yank it. I'm like, all right, you just do what you got to do. Okay, I, <laughs> Any, like, anytime you go outside, you're like that that kid that's going to play football for the first time that's got pillows like yeah. tied to him. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Put your helmet on. You're going outside. Like, it's Florida. I can't. Uh, oh, man. Uh, it was a mess. I think that was the whole but, thing I said, too, when we flew to New York and, you know, he just had to be the center of attention and pass out 30 minutes before we landed. And the whole time he's just uh, out of it. And I'm just like, you're such an asshole. And these people are looking at me. I was like, he's an asshole. Y'all don't know this, <laughs> but he's an asshole for doing this. He was fine the whole way. <laughs> uh, what yeah. was it? What? What'd you pass out? It was just the, the we don't even know. Like we don't. <laughs> that's that, like that, it's, it's really stupid. But so we took two airplanes to get up there, right? So we had to take one from San Antonio to Dallas, and then one from okay. Dallas to New York. And right. I mean, we're seriously like thirty, maybe forty-five minutes away from landing in New York, and all of a sudden, like I'm sweating mm-hmm. out of nowhere. And I'm just like, I just, I need to lay back or something. And then you're on an airplane. You can't go anywhere. Like, no. Yeah. You're just stuck where you're at. So like, I got like that anxiety sweats from uh, not feeling good. And then all of a sudden knowing that I can't go anywhere and I just passed out. Right. And then I wake up and they're like, uh, you know, Sam's already grabbed somebody from the flight crew and they're like trying to find somebody that's a nurse on the airplane. I'm crying, even though I'm right crying. next to him and I'm a yeah. nurse. Uh, I'm crying. I'm like, oh, I'm like an asshole. yeah, uh-huh. exactly. I was just fucking I was so mad. I was so mad and I was crying at the same time. So it wasn't a good look. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I don't like airplanes anyway. I, I, ugh, I, I thank the pilot every time for not crashing. <laughs> not cool. I know the pressure messes my head up. Come as soon as you start landing, like 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 a half hour before landing, they start going weird with the, the altitude. The pressure yeah, right. Like when they start bringing heavy. you down slowly, yeah, 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 yeah. No fun. I, I work on time, airplanes. Like, I try not to fly on them. Uh, yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't get the whole thing. It doesn't make any sense to me. You're in a giant metal thing flying through the air. No. Yeah, they make it up. They make up these weird sciences like aerodynamics. That yeah, whatever. It's magic. No, it's all magic. (laughs) I'd rather drive. I'm way better driving. We did good driving. We drove to we drove to uh, what uh, Kentucky and then Indiana. 
you know, and then nice. drove home and Sam drove home like in one shot. Like it was wild. All we did was stop for gas and food. And I wanted Sam to go just, home. She wanted to be home <laughs> so bad. Whenever I uh, want to go home, I'm typically the person to drive home because I can drive really fast. And I'm just like, I'll get uh, there. I get there in a heartbeat. So I drove nine hours of our 16 oh hour trip, like just nonstop. And he's like, you want to rest? No, don't <laughs> like, ask. No. <laughs> Yeah, because I yes. drive like a grandma. Well, she just passes yeah. people. I mean, and I got pulled over like <laughs> twice, and I just got a friendly, oh, it's okay. I was driving 170, I think a uh, 70. Uh, yeah. yeah, 100 miles an hour and a 70, yeah. <laughs> I thought you just said you were <laughs> driving 170 <laughs> miles. I was like, what? No, I was driving 100 <laughs> in a 70 area, and the cop was like, where are you going? I was like going home he's like oh well have a nice day i'm like okay bye and then i immediately go back to driving 100 yeah pretty much you know sam makes fast yeah. people look not so fast exactly uh <laughs> also, we never get tickets in knock on wood but uh, driving any other car i'm like the cops just want to pull me over i, I tend to go a little faster and uh, we always get pulled over <laughs> but if the panel truck, I get pulled over and they just like check it out and they let you go usually. But the uh, the stupid cars, you get you get a ticket. Oh my god! If you're if you've been listening to like the past episodes of the podcast, if you have not heard the episode we did with Justin Hussman uh, from uh -oh. Phoenix Insurance, oh yeah, where he got pulled over, he got pulled over. They have a like an old uh, like truck, yeah, Divco milk truck. Uh, that's like, the, you know, it's all painted up like, you know, with their logos and everything uh -huh. on it. And it's like crazy fast and has no mirrors like to see behind you. So he didn't know that he was being pulled over for like 10 minutes. <laughs> and, uh. and when he pulled over, like the cop, like took pictures with him in, in the milk truck and everything. But like the, it was funny to hear him tell his story. Like he said that cop was yelling at him pretty good. <laughs> He See. thought they were hitmen uh, and running from the law. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So I just couldn't see you. It's not my fault. Yeah, you see what I'm driving. <laughs> uh huh. I had a I had a cop ask me how he's supposed to get in the car because I had the panel truck. It was, and I had it's got shaved handles, and he's like, "How do I get in?" I'm like, you don't. <laughs> you like, don't. You stay the right the hell there. <laughs> uh -huh. Get out of the car, son. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He made you get out so he could see how to do it. Yeah, yeah. And I had to do the whole um, touch your nose and stand on one foot thing. Oh. oh Which wasn't no. cool because it was freezing cold in Pennsylvania and it was like three o'clock in the morning. And my wife was a little intoxicated in the truck and she's like, should I yell something out? Like, I'm having vertigo or something. And I'm like, thank God I didn't say anything. Please just keep quiet. The reason to have a drunk wife in the car is so you look more sober, not, not to uh, draw attention to anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Squindo, we, we definitely appreciate you being on the show, man. Is there anybody that you would like to give some shout outs to other than your wife? And thank your Don't wife. Don't steal my thunder. Don't steal my thunder. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> he wants to woman. thank her for putting up with everything and making her cry. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. I try. It's not my fault. I don't try to do it. I'm just very good at doing, doing stupid shit. <laughs> I think we all. This is why so I sad. don't think. Th this is. I think if y'all got together, I think me and her would be on the verge of tears every time y'all went outside. I'm like, I don't know what's gonna happen. Probably. I don't know which one's gonna do Probably. something, but it's gonna be one. They're gonna be the like, one's gonna be outside covering his arm, and the other one's gonna run inside and be like, oh no. <laughs> you need to go look. Uh, all right, folks, I can guarantee stupid. this. I can guarantee yeah. this that when y'all come from Florida to Texas and hang out, they, it, there will be a GoPro involved. Yeah, nothing dangerous, though, of course. Nothing dangerous. Nothing dangerous. Liar. <laughs> do my, my next tattoo is just nothing dangerous. <laughs> oh. oh, that's so awesome. Painful. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we oh. will let you get back to your normal life and we'll let all of our listeners get back to work because they should be doing that instead of listening to this podcast. Right. But, right. Get back to work. But 
if you are listening to this already, you might as well go and rate and review all of our stuff on Apple and on Spotify uh, because that's what helps us be able to keep doing what we do. Um, yeah, and also keep doing what you do. Well, we appreciate that. <laughs> this was really awesome. This was cool. You know, I, you know, we really do appreciate that, man. Cause like knowing that we, you know, have, you know, so many folks out there that listen to us. We also have a lot of folks that write in and like constantly send us messages. And Sam and I both run all of our pages. So like, it's not like we have somebody else doing that for us. So we respond to everything we possibly can. And it's, it's a, it's a lot, but it's awesome at the same time. And it's a, it's a full-time job and you already have full-time job. <laughs> These are facts. These are definitely yeah, facts. Yeah. Where can people go and find your social media just so we can get that pushed out to the world? Uh, my website is just squindo.net. Somebody got .com ahead of me. And, uh, <laughs> Were they at least halfway now, cool? I don't know. They're, I have long lost relatives in Switzerland and Italy, and this was one of them. He hasn't done anything with it. It's Damn. been years. And I went to register squindo.com, and it was like the two days before this guy had gotten it. I'm like, come on. So I am .net, not .com. And then Instagram is just my last name, Squindo. And then Facebook is Tony Squindo or there's another Squindo page that I don't post on at all. <laughs> awesome. Well, we, like I said, we will let you get back to doing what you do. And uh, as always, stay wild. Stay wild.